Okay, cool. So it is rolling right now. Okay, cool. So, Drop Fleet, new edition. Um, this is exciting, actually. Yesterday was the first the first time I've seen this printed physically in hand, which is which is cool. I, I love seeing seeing figures when they're real. Um, but here it is. So this video is about the rules. It's for new players and for existing players as well. First half, I'm going to talk about what Drop Fleet is. If you're an existing player, you already know that. Um, second half, we'll be talking about major changes in the rules, which is obviously applies largely to people who know first edition. But it will be interesting for people who are new to the game as well, because it will cover some details about how things work and certain things like that. So, first off, yes, new edition. Um, it's been many years, actually, that Drop Fleet first edition was on the market for. So it's high time a new edition came along, and there's a lot of things that we know we wanted to improve and work on. But first off, what is Drop Fleet? So Drop Fleet is a space combat game. Um, you're fighting with a large number of fair number of massive spaceships over a planet surface crucially drop fleet is an orbital combat game so you're fighting over a planet surface there's always some kind of objective to be fighting over it's never just line up your fleet in the blackness of space to fly fleet and they fight and then somebody's still alive at the end that's not what drop fleet is you're always trying to achieve objectives of one kind or another sometimes that is killing stuff killing stuff is always a good thing because for a lot of reasons um but it's not always about that and um, a lot of the time your map looks like this table here so instead of just a black star field you'll you have a planet surface that your ships are fighting over and there are cities on the ground you can drop troops into cities to capture things which is usually how we win games but not always there are also space stations in orbit which behave very similarly so you can drop troops into space stations capture those if they have guns, you can then start firing the guns from the things you've captured. You can then send in your troops to try and displace the enemy. So any ships that drop things are very important to winning games. Um, space combat is very much like the meat and the meat of the game. There's going to be a lot of big guns, big fired, a lot of big ships, and there's going to be a lot of explosions. Fighters and bombers, they now spend time on the board in this edition, so you're moving your fighters and bombers around building up big waves to hit ships at the other side of the ball, that kind of thing. And um, all the ships are, there are six factions in Drop Fleet. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail there, but you've got the UCM. That's the United Colonies of Mankind. They're your humans. Main faction for humanity, the most numerous. They're on the offensive for a change. Um, the humans are not just constantly being beaten down by the aliens. They're actually attacking. Um... They have, um, they're generally all-rounders. They have a lot of turreted weapons. Um, they're not necessarily the best at any one thing, but they're good all-rounders. Then you've got the, um, the Scourge, the vile alien parasite bad guys that have taken a lot of humanity's best planets and the humanity is on the offensive to try and recapture them. So even though the Scourge are a hyper-aggressive faction, they're very fast. A lot of their weapons are potent at close range. They play very aggressively. In the background, they're more on the defensive, but they do attack, and they will be doing plenty of attacking as well. Um, so yeah, they're, they're fast, close, dangerous, glass cannons a little bit. And then you have the PHR, post-human republic. They're, um, they're enhanced post-humans. So they're not very numerous, but they're more advanced than the UCM. They have generally better tech. They're generally more survivorable. They have a lot of broadsides in-game. So a lot of the time, one PHR ship could take on two ships if it manages to get off a double broadside, which is important for them. Play style-wise, they're tough. Not necessarily very fast, but they do have some fast ships. Then you've got the Shaltari, the Trixie aliens. They're, um, they're the most advanced race in the game. They have some of the most, like, eldritch technology that you're going to get from any other faction. They teleport their troops around rather than physically carry them because all that's too primitive for them. Um... They are the master manipulators behind the scene, behind the scenes, um, and yeah, they're they're a force to be reckoned with. Then you've got the um, the resistance, which are the humans who've been occupied by the scourge this whole time. So they are grizzled survivors of hundreds of years of occupation. In, in space, they're a little bit different because generally they're the ones who fled from the scourge invasion and had to survive in space on their own, um, often for hundreds of years with minimal resources. So they might have old tech. 
but their troops are highly elite and they're very well trained and they're tough you know so the resistance have a lot more customizability and variance compared to all the other factions so if you're an inventor and you like to make your fleet really unique and different and interesting then the resistance might be your faction and then you've got the new faction the biophysers which are artificial intelligences but their big thing is they can actually manipulate and build flesh drones so um, you know, for them, the tech is precious and the flesh is expendable. So they can kill enemies, they can absorb their biomatter and then use them to manufacture new drones that are completely expendable to them. They're like just one step up from robots, really. Um, rudimentary intelligence, that kind of thing. But there's, as a faction, they have a lot of advanced capability. They're not quite as advanced as the Shaltari in most respects, but the biological manipulation is more advanced than anything any of the other factions can do and they have very other things about them but because they're on this faction and i need to go into more detail on those i'm going to be doing a separate video on the biophysers so watch that one if you want to know more about our new faction which are right here on the cover <laughs> for one and um, so that's a that's a rundown of the game and um, for new players if you're not familiar with it that should be a good primer on fleet so now I'm going to get into what we've changed from first edition, which should interest people who already know the game, but well worth watching if you don't, because it's going to cover some various details about things. Noob, I'm just going to literally go through the book and pick out stuff that jumps out at me as important things that we've changed. Start of the book is all um, background. So actually, this is an important note as well, that I write the um, the background for Drop Zone and Drop Fleet, the Drop Zone universe, um, and it matters to me a lot like this is this is a story i've been telling for a long time and this is an opportunity for me to advance the story like every time we release a book the timeline advances it's 2679 now um which is nine years after the beginning of the reconquest which is when our original book came out right at the start so there is new background in here and um, the timeline has advanced there's obviously background about the Biophysers as well and how they came around and what they're up to currently and how they play, that kind of thing. But we're also alongside this, because this is a mini rule book, you know, this is mainly rules. That's that's background and the rest is rules. Um, that's obviously not enough to tell the story of nine years worth of galaxy-wide war. So we're releasing a downloadable, rewritten, I've completely rewritten, recompiled all the stuff that's come previously put it together in a digestible form so this if you're a new player and you want to know about this universe you get a primer in this book but that free downloadable background document is going to have everything you need to fully catch you up with all the important stuff that's happened and if you're an existing player that's been rewritten i've worked on it some more i'm very proud of it and hopefully you'll enjoy it a lot and there's more about the biophysis in there so definitely check that out as well that's downloadable on the site so anyway back to back to rules so Ship characteristics, a lot of these are the same as before, thrust, scan, sig, hull, that all works as you're used to. You now have two save, free save values instead of just one. You have energy save, kinetic save, backup save, energy save you use against energy weapons, kinetic save you use against kinetic weapons, backup save. Some Most ships don't have backup saves, especially small ships, but bigger ships like Dreadnought's battleships tend to have a backup save as well. You get that in addition to your regular save. Um, so if you fail your regular save, you could then have a backup save. Core weapons that are, that are really usually really powerful big guns tend to bypass both the kinetic and energy saves. But if you have a backup save, you can still use that. So backup save is important value. Group size, same as before. Um, special rules, they've obviously changed in various ways, but they, they go there just like they used to. Um, then the weapon stats, arc, front side, rear, same as before, and attacks, number of dice they get, same as before, lock value, same as before, damage, same as before, that's how many damage points you're going to inflict when you hit, and damage type, which is new, so in this case, Barracuda missile base, that's a kinetic weapon, so it's damage type K, kinetic. Special, close action, because that's a close action weapon in this case, and it can only be fired within scan range, um, and load which is now, um, with this one, this Lysander can carry one set of dropships, so it has a load of one dropships, which is the same as before. So that's your core stat line. Um, there's a few little tweaks and things. Which I'm not going to go into like massive detail here. I'm going to cover what I can fairly briefly. <laughs> 
um, weapons, token, assets, all um, things you launch now are assets. So battalions are assets, um, fighters, bombers, um, anything that you're deploying from the carrier. Usually it's fighters and bombers, but also torpedoes, they're called assets now. Um, basic, dice, same as before. Uh, measuring, I've already covered the... If your ships overlap now, the base size is relevant, so... You can't have bases overlapping, so if they would overlap, the ship will then move out of the way to the minimum place where it can fit. Um, that's basically how that works. Groups work more or less in the same way that they used to. A big difference, actually, is that the game fully incentivizes you to take groups, in that when you can have a group, usually you get group benefits that improve certain things if you have ships working together rather than just on their own. So there's a good reason to take bigger groups of ships. But also you can now take smaller groups. A lot of ships, like say destroyers, a lot of the time now their group size is one. So you don't have to take whole groups of destroyers. You can just take them on their own. But there's a good reason to take multiples as well. Um, orbital layers are still here. Um, because it's an orbital combat game, you're playing over multiple orbital layers. Now it's just orbit and atmosphere. Orbit works. Orbit is just regular space combat. That's where ships spend all of their time. No penalties for fighting in orbit. Atmosphere, though. Atmosphere is now effectively two layers of atmosphere. If your ship is designed to go in atmosphere, it can go... Um, it's harder to hit because it goes lower, and it doesn't suffer any penalties for that. If a ship isn't designed to go in atmosphere, and it ends up in atmosphere, it's going to start taking damage because it's going to be burning up, and it's going to be... It's not supposed to be down there, effectively. So you're changing orbital layers less in this edition. They're still there but they're less of a fav than they used to be, effectively. But ultimately, the end result is more or less the same, but you're worrying about it a bit less than you did in the previous edition. Uh, group size, uh, you always pick a lead ship for a group, and that lead ship, you can measure weapons fire from the lead ship most of the time, for example. That's one of the benefits of a, of a group rather than just one ship. And you can change the lead ship every time you activate, which is, which is cool, so you don't have to keep track of it. Your record keeping is massively cut down at this edition in a lot of ways. Spikes uh, still exist. Spikes, um, they represent making a lot of noise, firing a lot of guns, raising shields, that kind of thing. And that will extend the range that an enemy ship can accurately target you. Spikes now in this edition are more granular. They're just spikes, but you can have up to four, I believe. I think it's four. Um, and each spike will add three inches, so it's actually more granular than it used to be, but there are now no more major, minor, they're just spikes. Um, fire arcs, similar, there's now a broadside arc that covers everything on the side arc, plus some of the front arc and some of the rear arc. The bits that aren't taken up by front narrow and rear narrow, so broadsides are a little bit more flexible in this edition. Front narrow, I think, has got slightly wider as well by a bit, just to make those pointy weapons slightly easier to use, slightly less fiddly. Then fleet building, I've already covered that in the Q&A, but I don't know whether this video is coming out first. So major change in this edition, you're building your fleet around medium ships. Um, so you yeah, that's like, you build your ships around cruisers, so effectively. So the more cruisers you have, the more you can take of other things. You can't have, say... Um, more light ships than cruisers, things like that. So your your cruisers form the core of your fleet and everything else is built around that. There are other things to do with fleet building, but that's the basic premise. And um, the battle groups are gone. There are no more battle groups anymore. You'll just have groups. Um, ability points, they're, um, they're new. That's based on your admiral. The higher your admiral levels, the more ability points you get to, to spend on abilities during the game. They do various things. I'm not going to get into that, but... That's, that's effectively a command mechanic, and that's new, and that's doing new things. So, game rounds, initiative, and everything, past token generation, this is a big one. So, because battle groups don't exist anymore, you could feasibly out-activate out your opponent by taking a ton of tiny groups of, like, one ship, one ship, one ship. Well, you can't do that because you generate past tokens if you have less at groups than your opponent at the start of each turn. So... If you try and out activate somebody, that isn't going to work. They're just going to get a big pile of pass tokens, and you can choose to pass if you don't want to go. So, you know, big groups are nice because they hit hard. That's always been the case, and that still is the case. But you can't out activate people by fudging your fleet that way. So don't worry about that. Um, initiative is pretty much the same as before. Groups orders, um, similar. They've all changed subtly. 
there's little changes, but basically, yes, you still give orders. General quarters, which is the old standard op, as it's now called general quarters, is a bit more flexible. So you now get to fire up to half your weapons rounded up. So if you've got three guns, you can fire two of them, which is particularly important for big stuff like dreadnoughts because they become a lot more usable because you can fire half of their considerable number of guns and generally kick ass, which is nice. Um, so you'll be using general quarters a bit more than you would have used standard orders in the old edition. Uh, but there's your weapons free, course change, max for us, damage control, silent running, that are all mostly familiar, but there are various changes within those. Uh, movement is very similar to before, not exactly the same, but basically the same. Attack works more or less the same way. Critical hits are gone now. Um, there are other things that do more damage, and there are certain weapons that do more damage when critical still exist, but they don't do double damage anymore. Most of the time they do nothing, but some rules interact with criticals. So they are still a thing, but in a different way. Ships tend to be a bit tougher in this edition in general. You get to fire more guns a lot of the time, so that's mitigated by that a bit. So a lot of the time in the old edition, you'd finish, you get halfway through the game, and more than half the ships will be dead before, like, turn three. That's not the case now. Like, ships will stick around. Battleships and dreadnoughts in particular are not easy to kill. They're going to they're gonna be around for a while, and they're going to be hurting you while they're around. So, yeah. Ship survivability has gone up a bit. Uh, not loads, but a bit. Um, saves, we've gone over how they've changed. Uh, crippling effects are similar. Ship is reduced to half. It's going to do something bad to your ship. Um, explosions are still in there. There's less of the cascading... Like, resolving explosions are a little bit quicker. There used to be moments where, like, a big cascade of explosions would take ages to resolve. That's been simplified a bit through various means. The end result is very similar, but you're just going to be rolling less dice and going through less of a process to arrive at the same result. <laughs> then battalions here, that's uh, deploying onto things. Deploying features. This is a big new one in the rules. So ground combat has been much simplified in that now there are just battalions. There aren't defense batteries, infantry, vehicle, like that's all gone. There's just they're just battalions now. Um they do they interact, they fight in a similar way to before, but again, much less dice, much more streamlined way of resolving ground combats. You would generally end up with the same result, but you're going to be resolving them in seconds rather than minutes, which is great. Um but there's also now features, which is a new thing. So Certain ships can deploy features, which are big, big scenery items. Um, they do various things in the game. They're quite hard to get rid of once they're down. They do contest things that they've been dropped onto. They have certain rules. Um, the scenarios also include features that are already on the table. So that's if you already own tokens, things like defense batteries, military complexes, that kind of thing. They're still in the rules and they, they do things and you'd be placing them on to drop sites. Drop sites are now, um, is the new term for cities and space stations. They're all called drop sites. There are different rules for space stations and cities, but they're drop sites, and you can put features on space stations or cities, which is cool, and they do various things, and they're really important, and there aren't many of them out yet, but watch this space. They're coming, and they're going to make a difference to the game. They're, they're pretty cool. I'm happy with the way they've panned out, but you'll, you'll see. Um... Asset phase, that's the old, that's battalion combat, boarding actions, um, asset combat, that all happens there. Um, fighters and bombers, this is huge change to this edition, it's something I was super keen to do, because fighters and bombers previously pretty much behaved like weapons, most of the time they would resolve straight away, and it wouldn't even be worth putting the tokens on the table, which is kind of sad. And also crew carriers in fleet combat in the real world, carriers have the most range because they can send out Fighters and bombers a long way away from them to hit things way beyond the horizon. Though now they behave more like that, so your carrier could sit at the back, stay safe, and be deploying waves of waves after wave of fighters and bombers to strike at an enemy at the other side of the table. It's going to take them several turns to fly there. While they do, they could form up with other of your bomber wings to make a bigger wing. Uh, you're not going to be swamped with a billion tokens because the way it works is you build a wing. So a wing is X tokens represented by one token. And it's very good to build up a big wing. Because a big wing is much harder to kill with fighters. It's going to hit harder when it hits. Um, so you, you're fully incentivized to build large wings. Which reduces the number of tokens mucking about on the table. So it's not going to be a sea of fighters and bombers. 
but they are sticking around, they are flying around. Obstacles, asteroid belts and things, they feel much more like real fighters and bombers should feel. Um, so that's an important change to the game. Um, torpedoes, yeah, similar. Torpedoes now will keep going, so you can fire your torpedoes on turn one, and they might hit something at the back of the board on turn three, maybe. But, you know, they, they have range now. They still hurt like hell because they're torpedoes. <laughs> um, you know, so they're, they're still in there. Um, end phase, repair, victory points, clean up. That's all pretty much the same. Scenery is still very important in the game. Um, because it's orbital combat, it's not just an empty bit of space. There are debris fields, planetary rings, mic micrometeor clouds, objects like moons and things, they stick around, they all do things. Most of them behave in a similar way to before. They interact with weapons in a similar kind of way, not quite the same, but there's stuff going on there. Uh, drop sites, that's all. They're much more standardised and much more streamlined now. You know, small, medium, large space station, small, medium, large city. They all have one set of stats for those um, that do different things. Features that are already on them. You know, most of the existing tokens you own are still viable here. You know, orbital gun, com station, power plant. New one, hangar. That's new. That's not in the previous edition. Uh, there's a bit more to it than that, but that's the basics. Um, scenarios are still similar to how they would work before. They're all in there. There's a scenario generator now. So there's much more scope for having each game be different. Uh, there are some pre-mades in here as well if you're new to it. So you can just get straight in there and play one of the pre-mades. But there's a ton of scenario variants. There's a lot more scope for doing more interesting things with scenarios in this edition than that. It's all in this book, which is nice to have. Yeah, so secondary objectives, they're new. Um, they're chosen, not necessarily, your opponent won't necessarily know what they are. So the foregone conclusion thing was another thing we were really keen to squash in this edition. A lot of the time in fleet, you would look at what your opponent has, look at what you've got, look at how it's been deployed, and then within a turn or so, experienced players would generally be able to know who was going to win. And that's boring. Nobody likes that. This edition, there's more choice to, in, to change the outcome through the game. And there's also secondary objectives that only you know about most of the time. So your opponent doesn't necessarily know what else is going to score your points. So you have to think about that. And that could potentially give you a way to play the game differently, depending on what fleet you're playing against. Um, two lists is now in here as a rule. So a lot of the time we would encourage TOs to allow players to write two lists before tournaments. And they choose which one they want to run for that particular scenario. That's not essential, but that's in there and that's specifically stated. We've made a ton of changes to special rules like weapon rules and various things. But I can't get into that now because that will be... <laughs> I'll go into that for I'll be at that for ages. But there's most of the things you're familiar with are still in here. Some of them work a bit differently. Some of them haven't changed at all. But there's still the nuance and detail with weapon rules that they used to be. But I've tried to streamline things where possible without taking away character, but without taking away tactical utility and things like that. So ugh, that was a big one. <laughs> um hopefully that's answered a ton of questions you've got about the new edition. Um, and if you're new to it, hopefully that's given you a good idea of the kind of depth that there is to the game. There's lots. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this. And I, I can't wait to see what lists people are going to take and, you know, how they play the game and see people playing it at last. It's going to be great. So, yeah, thanks for listening.